Hey guys, this is Pankaj from journaldev.com. In this video, we will look into factory design pattern. So factory design pattern is a creational design pattern. It deals with how we instantiate an object. So in this video, we will look when you should use factory design pattern. And then we will understand how do you implement factory design pattern. What all benefits you get by implementing factory pattern in your application. We will also look at some examples in Java. As well as we will also look into some Eclipse code snippets. And uh, I will provide uh, my website link in uh, description where you can go and get the complete code of factory pattern implementation. So when to use factory pattern? So when you have a structure where you have a super class and then there are multiple implementation of it. For example, here I have computer interface and then there are two implementations, server and PC. Now suppose we have a computer client and it wants to instantiate server and PC objects. So they will have to use their constructor such as shown here, new PC and then by providing all the arguments, it gets the instance of PC. Same goes with how to instantiate server object. Now if you look at this way of having your classes and having the way it is instantiated, it has certain problems. First of all, this code is very tightly coupled. For example, let's say for some reason you have to change your PC constructor and you have to add another argument. So in that case, your client class will also have to change. That is not a good practice. Another drawback of this way is there is no abstraction. Client is aware of all the instances of computer such as server and PC and also client is the responsible person for creating instances of server and PC. So client has to do a lot of work to get the object of server and PC. So how do we fix this scenario? So we can use factory pattern to fix this scenario. So what factory pattern says is you create a factory class and provide a means to get the instances of these subclasses server and pc let's see how to do it so how to implement factory pattern so we already had this structure of computer and its subclasses then we have this client class in between we introduced a computer factory and this factory has a method create computer and using this method now client classes will get the instance of server and pc and then we have a enum computer type and client has to pass the value of computer type and based on that they will get the instance of either server or PC. So the pseudo code is given here. So they will call this computer factory create computer. This method is static and as you can see that the first argument is where they are passing the type. It's either PC or server and based on that the factory method will create different instances and return it. So now let's look into my Eclipse project and see how the code looks and how we can extend it easily. So guys, here is my project in Eclipse and this is my computer base interface. And then I have this implementation PC which has certain variables and this is the constructor and I am implementing all the methods in the interfaces. Similarly, I have another implementation server. It's almost same as PC. Now, let's look at our factory implementation because that is the main thing here. So this is the computer factory and this is the method create computer. And the first argument is computer type. If you look at computer type, Right now it has just two values, PC and server. And in factory, I have this switch case conditions. If the computer type comes as PC, 
then an instance of PC is created and returned. If it is server, then instance of server is created and returned. Now, if we are using factory, then in client class, you, we are using factory to create the computer. And let's look how easy it is to extend. For example, let's say I am creating a new class supercomputer and it is implementing computer interface. Now what I'll have to do is here in computer type I'll add another value supercomputer and then change the factory method by adding another case for supercomputer and then just return it. Now if client program wants to get an instance of supercomputer all they have to do is pass this computer type value as supercomputer and that's it. So any existing client program doesn't need any change. If some new client programs are coming they can easily use the new supercomputer. So the code is very easy to extend. There is an abstraction. Now let's look into what all benefits we get by using factory pattern. So benefits of factory pattern. As we already saw it provides ab abstraction between your core classes and your client classes by having this factory class in between. Then it's, it's a loosely coupled code. Your client doesn't know how the objects are getting instantiated and the response and then the responsibility is moved from client to factory so if any change is required in the way we are instantiating the objects all we have to do is change the factory and the client side no change will be required then it's very easy to extend as we already saw it's very easy to add another implementation of the super class and then quickly change the factory to provide a way to instantiate the newly created class. So now let's look at some JDK examples where factory pattern is being used. So I have got two examples here calendar class and number format get instance method. Let's look into these classes methods in Eclipse. Okay, so here is the calendar class in I have opened in Eclipse and this is the create calendar method and if you see a locale is being passed here and then we have this switch case statement where if the locale value is Buddhist, a Buddhist calendar instance is created and returned. Same, similarly we have for Japanese as well as Gregory calendar. So this is where factory pattern is being used in calendar class create calendar method. Next look at the number format class. So in number format class we have get instance method. And here, if, we, if the choice is number style, then a number instance is returned. I won't go into exact implementation how it is implemented, but you can see that based on this value of choice, it's returning different kind of number format instance. If it is 2, then it is returning percent or currency or integer. So that's all I had for factory pattern. Please like and share this video. Thank you. Bye bye.